Hey there, this is Nils Beardwood and today I want to show you how I upgrade this chest armor to this one. I start by taking my old chest armor and moisten it a little bit from the inside to give it a little bit of a reshape. Also I want to replace the lilies at the front with a little bit more of a 3D version of leather, so I cut all the threads and remove the rivets. To get the 3D lily I need a piece like this, so I use hole punches and knives to get it. Also I cut in some veins and bevel the edges. I want to get more height, so I glue on additional pieces of leather at certain places. Next I use some thin veg tanned leather and moisten it completely and put it all over the piece and use a variety of stems and tools to get it just in the shape of the base piece. Next I want to cut away all the excess leather and glue everything together. For a little bit more body I also use a base plate out of leather. Cut away all the excess and bevel the edges. And then I cut some sewing holes just to put it in place. For the rest of the armor and the belly and back area I need a little bit more of leather. So I put on my pattern, trace the edges and cut out that. This pattern was only experimental but you can get the full version down in the links on my Etsy store. On the back side there will be only one layer, but on the front there are two. So there's the top and the base part. And on the base part we want to cut out exactly only the bottom edge, but not the top and not the side, for now. Using a wing divider to get a parallel line along the edge and punch there some sewing holes. With the beveler I break the edges and make them more roundish. Then we want to moisten the veg tan leather all over. Transferring your artworks onto the leather and use tooling tools to get them in shape. Here I don't even use a silver knife before because it's not important exactly how they look. Also use a stone just to get in a few battle marks as well as a cut with a swivel knife. With a bone photo I stretch out the leather from the inside out just to give it a more roundish shape. On the actual big chest piece it's really really important. Here it's secondary. Also make sure that you shape top and base piece together, so they later on also fit well. We also need a few straps, so I give them some tooling to make them stand out. For dyeing I like to use my airbrush just to get all the control over the color that I need. I had the idea to give it a little bit of some bluish fade out to the top of the piece but in the end you can't really see it so it actually wouldn't be necessary to dye it blue here. For the shiny metal look I like to use some resist together with some resin powder 
adjust the color and basically dry brush everything. With some black antique gel I give this aged old look, put it everywhere and then just wipe away all the excess. And to finish everything up I add a coat of resist on top. When you also put the resist on the edge you can use the moisture to burnish it. Next we want to assemble the front side, so we position the top on the base piece, mark the edges and rough up the leather. Put on some contact cement, wait a few minutes and then put everything together. And here is why you keep some excess leather on the base piece. Just to have a little bit of room to position the top piece and then cut away the excess later. Now we cut the sewing holes all the way through and after this we can cut away the excess and sew it. To get a smooth edge, we sandpaper it, bevel it, re-dye it, and also re-burnish it. We also need on two of the three belly pieces some holes at the sides for the straps. After the holes are placed, we can re-moisten all the piece completely and bring it into its final shape. If you note in the end that the shape is not optimal, you just can re-moisten it and reshape it. Next we attach the side straps on two of the three belly pieces with rivets. This one is the highest belly piece and it has no holes at the side and also no straps because just not necessary. We also want to upgrade the old chest piece with the lilies. So we get a strap first, cut it into size, thin out both ends and put it on with rivets. Next we position the lilies, mark the edges, rough the leather up and glue them on. The glue is here only to hold it in place as long as possible, so we can easily cut our holes all the way through for sewing and sew it. So here we upgraded the flat lilies with 3D lilies. For the back side I wanted to add a spine, so I need these little pieces, moisture them in the middle, hammer them to an edge and sew them together. Then moisture them completely and shape them just to get a little bit of a spiny shape. And just as before, we position everything, mark the edges, rough up the leather, punch some holes and glue it on. With rivets and sewing, we make sure everything sticks in place pretty much forever. Also here we need a few holes for the buckles at the side, 
So we punch those and then moisten everything for shaping. We also need these buckle straps and when we got them we can put them in position on the back sides with rivets. For some reason I thought the top back part is a good idea to split it in half, but that's not my opinion today. So I sew everything back together and glue on a strap at the inside just to make it stable. Since one, we want to keep on the spine look here as well, we punch some holes Put the spine in position and use rivet to hold it in place permanently with a bit of glue. To reassemble the whole chest armor I like to use backpack straps which are flexible and strong and I simply cut open a hole for rivets and put them all together with those. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video, which is a little bit different to all the others I made, because it's uh, upgrading something I already made. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it. You can get the full pattern of this on the link in my Etsy store down below. And see you guys next time. Have a great day.